Accounting Equation and Excel, Bill Payment Form. Get ready and some coffee because we're learning the accounting foundation, the accounting equation using Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't wanna be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six-pack isn't spelled right. But three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there or just build your own worksheet as we go or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank, example, in essence, the answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on is where we started with a blank worksheet, but now we're basically adding to a template. However, we will be adding to that template as needed as we go. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing. Quick right recap of what we have done. We're building our bookkeeping system based on the accounting equation. The accounts within the accounting equation in essence acting as our trial balance. First putting in those beginning balances, imagining we pulled them in from our prior accounting system, then adding the normal starting journal entries that are only there typically in the startup process and are not day-to-day -day journal entries. The need for cash, for example, coming from either transfers from the owner's bank account or coming from a loan to get the cash. We then looked at the journal entries we need for startup costs typically the purchase of property, plant, and equipment, and possibly inventory, those being the things that we're, in essence, investing in, in order to help to generate revenue in the future. And then we started, of course, to make our sales. We're selling inventory items of guitars and service items like guitar lessons and tune-ups or whatever as well. So now we're going to be doing a bill payment form uh, for this transaction. Now the bill payment form is an accrual type of form. Remembering whenever we're doing an accounting system, we want to be thinking about, especially if we're doing a bookkeeper and we're pulling in clients, what is the, what is the model that we're trying to assign that we're going to systematically get down to as trimmed a process as possible. And sometimes that model will be we're gonna to try to be on a cash-based system, try to run things from the bank feeds, and then look at the things that mess up that situation, such as accrual components, inventory, accounts receivable, accounts payable, being some of those items as well as possibly payroll. Then you could specialize in some of those problem areas because there's gonna be companies of a certain type that are gonna have these types of inventory problems, these types of tracking accounts payables problems, these types of accounts receivables problems that other bookkeepers can't handle so well because they're trying to automate their system. So you might specialize in those areas or you might be one of the bookkeepers that are saying, no, I'm not gonna take on those clients because 
they don't fit the business model that I put together. Sorry, it's just the way it is. That's the business model I put together. I have to align things to that. I'm not trying to, that's, that's, the, that's just how my business is, okay? So that's what we have to look at here. Now, when we look at the accounts payable, it's gonna be an accrual component on the payment side, similar to accounts receivable, in which case, like with accounts receivable, when we make sales on account issuing an invoice, we don't actually get the cash payment and therefore have to track the accounts receivable in a subsidiary ledger. Similarly with accounts payable, when we get a bill, we could pay the bill or we could enter it as accounts payable to be paid later, that adding an accrual component forcing us to track the vendors that we need to be populating that we're gonna pay at some future point. Now. Quick recap of when this is going to happen because this is more complex than just paying off the bill. If you're doing bookkeeping as a bookkeeper and you're picking up small to mid sized companies, it's likely that you don't uh, have a whole lot of accounts payable that you're tracking, even though you might have accounts receivable that you're tracking, because even small businesses might need to invoice clients tracking accounts receivable. Uh, because that's the type of industry that they are in. Accounts payable is a little bit different, however, because accounts payable, it often makes sense to just pay the bill when you get the bill. Remembering that a bill itself in normal terminology might say invoice on it because it was an invoice from the person who sent it, like the utility company, for example, or it might say bill on it, to us, it's a bill. We might not physically get the bill anymore. That doesn't mean that there's no longer such things as bills. It just means that we're getting an electronic bill. Now, we might not even get an electronic or email bill anymore because it might. we might set up an automatic payment type of system, which is just gonna, we're gonna get an email maybe that confirms a payment or that we're going to have a payment. So that means that the term bill has kind of morphed in meaning we still imagine a paper bill but the the bill itself we can think of as a data input form so even if we don't manually put the bill into the system we can think of it as a data input form of a bill if we just pay off the bill with the bank feeds automatically then although we still kind of get a, a, an electronic bill we don't enter it into the system as a bill we enter it into the system as basically a check form. Even though we don't physically write a check and you might call it an expense form, it's still gonna be a type of check form because that's the form that we use to decrease the checking account. So the data input form, even if there's not a physical check, is a check form. Now, if we're going to not write a check when we get the bill, but rather increase accounts payable to pay the bill at a later point in time, that's when we enter it into the system as a bill type form. So for, for our purposes for data input, the bill form means accounts payable is going to go up. Now, oftentimes for small businesses, we're not going to, we're not going to do that. We're just going to pay the bill either with cash or possibly with a credit card, either of which can use the bank feeds and automate the process. And so, if you're a bookkeeper, you're, that's possibly the easiest side of things to automate for small to mid-sized businesses. Larger businesses, however, the tracking of the bills and tracking of the accounts payables could be a specialty area in and of itself because once we get a lot of transactions or the transactions get larger in dollar amounts, it becomes every day that we can hold on to the money longer will have an impact because of the time value of money. Unlike if we're just paying like a $300 utility bill today or 15 days from now, not a big deal if we pay it early. Although the general idea is like we want to hold on to the cash as long as possible. Doesn't really matter for smaller businesses, but for larger businesses or businesses with cash flow issues, that those couple days could make a significant impact on our cash flow. And that's why larger businesses, you can specialize in accounts payable saying, hey, look, I'm gonna create value because you have all these accounts that you're paying kind of early. They're kind of large dollar amounts. If you just held on to the money a little bit longer, you wouldn't lose any money and you'd hold on to the cash longer and you'd have better cash flow 
not being hit with the inflation and so on and so forth. So that's just when the accounts payable might come into play. Again, it's an area you might want to specialize in, but if you do, possibly that's going to be because you work within a larger company that has a lot of transactions and therefore specialized need to really track that accounts payable. Okay. So at this point in time, we're going to imagine that we put these beginning balances on the books for accounts payable of uh, the 15,000. And then at some point in time, we're going to have to pay it. So we will track our subsidiary ledger, look for the due date when the payment is due and then pay it. Now, this is another area in accounts payable where when we build this in like an Excel worksheet, we don't get quite as much detail as we can in a database program such as a QuickBooks or a Zero, for example. In other words, I have to track my accounts payable and then track my subledger by who I owe the money to so that I know who I owe the money to. However, I, I also would like more information about the bill information in terms of when it is due. So accounting software can further adjust the subledger into multiple reports and tell you which bills are going to be coming due and so that you can pay them exactly on the due date basically so that gives you a little bit added information also the data input forms because we use forms instead of like journal entries which is basically what we're doing here you can tie together the forms so that means that the bill form is going to increase accounts payable and then when you pay the bill form with a bill payment form, you can tie that out to the bill. So when I go in and drill down on the bill, the bill will say that it has been paid and it'll link to the payment form. Now also just realize you might say, hey, look, well, this bill payment form sounds like a check. That's the type of thing that decreases the checking account. It is a check type form. Even if it's an electronic transfer, it's still a type of check form because it decreases the checking account. However, it's a, it's a special check form because the other side of it will always go to accounts payable. So a lot of accounting systems like QuickBooks will call it a bill payment and they might still call it a check form. But just by the fact that it's a bill payment form tells you that it's a special form that decreases the checking account. The other side we already know then is going to accounts payable. All right, so the journal entry is fairly straightforward. So we're going to say this is 126. We're going to say that we pay off accounts payable uh and it's going to be a pay a bill form bill payment form is going to be it it's going to be for epiphone that's going to be the vendor that we buy guitars from we are imagining we're paying off fifteen thousand dollars how would this happen in practice we look at our sub ledger we see that we owe these people money we see that it's coming due we have to pay it before we're delinquent on it uh, we want to hold on to the money as long as possible while paying it in time so that we're not late and we take advantage of possibly any cash discounts and also don't piss off our vendor we want good relations with the vendor so you don't want to get too crazy with holding on to the money if it's gonna annoy them so that's the balancing act that we play so cash is going to go down because it is a type of check form but the other side is going to be on the uh, accounts payable so the accounts payable is going to go down liability there's the transaction straightforward let's put the zeros across the board and then we'll adjust the sub ledger sub ledger zeros across the board du, 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 du. no impact on the income statement noting why isn't their income statement impacted because it was impacted when we put the bill on the books which didn't happen in our accounting system here it happened in the prior accounting system when we pulled in the beginning balances. So it hit the income statement last year, or in our case, they possibly bought inventory and then expensed it with cost of goods sold. But to simplify the thought process, you can imagine that we're paying off like the utility bill. And if it was for the utility bill, when we put the bill on the books, they would have hit the expense last year when they put the bill on the books. And now we're gonna be paying off the bill which means we're not going to hit the expense again. We're just reducing the accounts receivable, which means that from a timing perspective, there's a difference in, in that case from a cash basis and accrual basis. We have the same expense, but the expense possibly more properly, if it was a utility bill, should have hit the books last period because that's when we got the bill 
And the bill represents the fact that we already consumed the utility, the electric bill or whatever, in the past. And therefore, it should have been expensed th at that point, even though we had not yet paid for it. That's, that would make more sense. Typically, that would be a more consistent form of accounting. That's why we use the accrual system. The cash-based system can be distorted based on when you pay the cash which could be a lot different than when you actually consumed the expense, right? So then let's go to the sub ledger over here and say that we're going to say Epiphone. I'm in the column for Epiphone. It's going to go down by that 15,002. I'm going to copy down the total and there's going to be nothing in accounts payable. So here's the accounts payable total way up here. I'm just going to put my cursor in the fill handle, drag down the running balance. And it's running, it's running, it's running down. It's going to be tired. That's a long run. So it was at 15,000, goes down by uh, 15,000. We're now at zero. That amount on the sub ledger should match what's on our general ledger. And so if I net these two out, it will match. So it's down to zero. That looks good. Let's put an underline under the stuff, underline underline put an underline here and then we'll we'll wrap this up we'll wrap this up put an underline and then we'll copy down the balance copy down the balance copy it on down wait i'm moving it don't move it copy it fill handle the red thing on the right uh turns green already because there's nothing happening to equity and then we'll bring down the balance bringing down the balance and so i'm just going to equals the sum of the last balance and the current activity we're going to copy that right click and copy pasting it across the board pasting it formulas pasting the formulas and one more time pasting the formulas then we'll copy down the balance and see what our balances are boom copying down the balance copy down the balance that red should turn green so that is good so we were at 246.525 we spent 15,000 cash therefore our assets are down to 231.525 our liabilities were at 90,344 uh, but we paid off the liability so they went down to 75,344 net impact on equity which can be seen as assets minus liabilities is now still at 156,181 let's put an underline under these to finish it up home tab font group boom we're getting down to business you know i don't know i'm not sure i like the term down to business because i like i prefer to get i'm up to business i'm up to business man what are you up to i'm up to business it sounds more it sounds more positive anyways <clears throat> there's where we're at